Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from around the country. At its 9th hearing of the House Subcommittee on Africa, Global Health, Global Human Rights and International Organizations, Congressional Committee members sought a State Department designation of genocide for ongoing violence against Christians by the Islamic State. The designation could produce considerable pressure for additional U.S. military intervention in the region, not just humanitarian aid. It is expected that soon the State Department will declare that the Yazidis, a religious minority in Iraq targeted by the Islamic State, are facing genocide. Many hope with that declaration there will be a stronger response to the ISIS treatment of Christians in the region. Witnesses at the hearing included Carl Anderson, Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus, who said that an official government declaration of genocide is an opportunity to bring America's religious communities together to pursue the truth, to support victims, and to bear witness to the noble principle of never again. Under the 1948 Genocide Convention, the United States and other signers are supposed to respond to genocide by investigating and punishing those who are responsible. One news now from around the country. The holy doors for the Jubilee of the Year of Mercy have been open at the Vatican, and they have also been open at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington. Cardinal Donald Worrell of Washington reflects on this special year and the ways in which the faithful can participate. This year, we're going to be celebrating the Jubilee, the Jubilee of Mercy. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has called for a year of mercy, and he's asked us to focus on God's loving mercy for us and to start this, to show dramatically what this means. He's invited holy doors to open all over the church Every cathedral around the world has been invited to designate a holy door. And what does it symbolize? Our Holy Father reminded us that the door symbolizes the welcoming embrace of God's mercy. We should go through that door reminding ourselves we're entering into the presence of God's mercy. None of us can say that we don't need God's mercy. We don't need forgiveness. This year will be a time to highlight how easily accessible is that mercy. So all you have to do is go through that holy door. And doing that, you say to yourself, you remind yourself, God is always waiting. As Pope Francis said, we sometimes get tired of asking for forgiveness. God never gets tired of forgiving. Well, the door will be open the entire year of mercy. They'll remain available on through to the Feast of Christ the King at the end of the next liturgical year, November in 2016. You can go through the door as often as you want. I recommend every time someone is near the cathedral, or near the basilica, or in their own diocese, near whatever church the bishop has designated as the church with the holy door, probably the cathedral. Every time you get a chance, go through the door and remind yourself of God's love, God's mercy, and simply ask. You know, it's so simple to say an act of contrition. It is so simple to say the Apostles' Creed. Renew your faith. Say a word of, of repentance, and then let God's mercy do the rest. And here in the Archdiocese of Boston on December 13th at 1130 a.m. at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross, Bishop Peter Uglietto, Vicar General and Moderator of the Curia for the Archdiocese, will open the Holy Door of Mercy on behalf of Cardinal Sean O'Malley, who is in Rome this week. The Door of Mercy will remain open throughout the Jubilee, and everyone is welcome to make a private pilgrimage or arrange for a group to come together. If you'd like more information, you can visit bostoncatholic.org slash year of mercy. And finally in the news, a statement released December 10th by the Pontifical Commission for Religious Relations with the Jews said that Catholics are called to witness to their faith in Jesus before all people, including Jews, 
but the Catholic Church neither conducts nor supports any institutional missionary initiative directed toward Jews. In the statement entitled, The Gifts and the Calling of God are Irrevocable, the Commission gives thanks for 50 years of Catholic-Jewish dialogue that looks at some of the theological questions that have arisen in the dialogue and in Catholic theology since the Second Vatican Council. The statement says that how God will save the Jews if they do not explicitly believe in Christ is an unfathomable divine mystery, but one which must be affirmed, since Catholics believe that God is faithful to His promises and therefore never revoked His covenant with the Jewish people. The new document also affirms that Christianity's relationship with Judaism is unique in the field of interreligious dialogue because of the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. In addition to believing that the Jewish scriptures are God's revelation, Jesus and his disciples were practicing Jews, and many elements of Catholic liturgy developed out of a formal Jewish prayer. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network. Thank you.